Okie dokie. Right, so VMix 28 is just around the corner. Uh, I thought I'd take a quick look and give you a rundown of everything I find useful. So this is going to be super quick. So let's start. So first of all, there's now five streaming locations or streaming destinations. Great. It supports NDI 6. Great. In the stats, there's now a encoder. So you can see what is actually being used by what. This is great, but it's still important to look at your GPU encoder here. Um, yeah, it'd be really useful if it could tell you how much percentage wise you were using, but, but there we go. Um, great, uh, audio, if you right click on these now, you see a show all buttons and you get access to all of your buses, great. In the settings, there is now a option in the audio to disable the scroll wheel in affecting the audio meters. So when you're scrolling up and down, a load of inputs, you're not accidentally scrolling the audio. Perfect. Production clocks. You now have an additional production clock for time remaining. And when a VT is running on the main screen, you will see that the top one, as I've just set production clock one to be time remaining, it sets the time remaining. And this will preserve your in and out marks as well. You can also, from there, create an input, which I've already done. Uh, and now you have an input that you can put on things like a multi-view, which is very useful. So there we go. You could then punch that around the place or output it wherever you need to. Um, you also have this available via NDI. So in the NDI, there is now clocks. So you can now punch out your clocks if you have enabled the -da, cameras calls audio inputs. If that NDI is on, you can get your production clocks out via NDI free of charge. Great. So you can have that set to time remaining, but it will only work when it's on the main output. Uh, so that's that. Great, now you've got some triggers. So for instance, on here, I've set up some triggers on playback time equals and on playback time remaining. Uh, they're there and you can get it to do stuff. Now, the time remaining only works if you do not have loop selected. If you have loop selected, the time remaining does not work. And also, a little gotcha, uh, this time is in hours, minutes, seconds. So you can't go below a second, you can't get half a second. Great. Mix inputs. Mix inputs now have stingers, so you can use stingers as part of your transition. I've not got one set up, but that's how you would do that. You can also set a mix output directly to the outputs. So in here, you can just click there and you have your mix outputs. Super. Right, multi views. You've now got two multi views, one and two. Uh, you also, in custom layout, you can disable the um, program preview. You can disable those by clicking that button. Uh, you can also choose that. You can send mixes and stuff and I don't really understand everything that's changed here. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't seem to work when I'm trying it, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, there is a new audio input. So add input, uh, audio input, and then in here, if we click application audio, we get a list of applications. So I can use Chrome. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Mic test, yep. And then we can add that as an input. So now that just pulls that audio source isolated, which is great. Um, you can kind of use this to get around using things like VB cable. However, you still need to get audio back the other way. So it's not a full solution for lots of things. Now the two actual really useful features. So flatten layers. So flatten layers. Previously, if I put a, um, a, a this, this input here is the red background and then I've put a layer over the top of a cropped 4.3 of my video. So I've got this video over the top. And you can see how I've done that in the layers. On the first layer, I've set a 4-3 crop. And then I've brought that input now onto this input using, again, a layer. Now, the old way of the way things work is my main layer from my previous input would be croppable. So I can crop my main layer, as you can see, and I've put a board around it. I can crop that. However, any layers I had on top of my main layer, the crops are not preserved. But what I can now do is in the general of the upstream, if you want, if I click flatten layers, now when I go to my downstream, um, if that's the way we're going to call them, you can go into your layers and your crops affect the whole image, not just the main layer. So basically it flattens that input down to be a single layer and then uses that, which is probably the way it should have worked anyway. Uh, this is great for nested pips because um, you now don't have to fight with multiple crop layers uh, back up the chain. Great, and then the big one, I guess, is the Telestrator, which is this input here. Now, to turn Telestrator on, you need to go to Settings, and you need to go to Web Controller, and then here, you need to enable this. And once you've enabled that, quickly go to Add Input, 
And then at the bottom you'll find Telestrator and then you just click OK to add it, a bit like a zoom input. Uh, I already have one so it shouldn't add a second one, there you go. Lovely. You can go to the web interface, the web controller, and up here you have the Telestrator. Now the Telestrator has the uh, main output, let's just make this a thing. So you choose your output here. Uh, let's go back to Telestrator. So if I cut that to be my Big Buck Bunny, uh, let me just clear this. So this is my live view. You can edit your latency and turn the video off if you need to. But this is my view of the output. Again, you saw me change what output that was just now. In your settings, you can actually choose which output you're using, but it must be one of the four. You can choose the video quality as well. Now, how this works is from the web browser, you can draw on top of your live image. And then in vMix, depending on what you want to do with this, you can then, for instance, apply it as an overlay or you can use it as an image for something else. So that's pretty cool. And if I just pop back to my Telestrator, there's a, there's a few features here. So you can freehand, you can draw, there's a, a change the size. So I could draw a bigger one like this uh, or a thicker line, you can draw a circle, you can change the color. So I can make it pink and all future do that. Cool, you can do some image stuff. Uh, I've not looked into that, but it's pretty cool. And then you can like dot round numbers if you so wish, and it will increment. And if you click drag, it will scale those numbers, which is pretty good if you're needing to annotate text. And there's also this laser pointer as well, which just gives you a red mark um, when you point on it. So that's pretty cool. And there's also a full screen mode uh, if you need that there. Uh, the only thing to uh, sort of say is there's now these buttons at the bottom. They can be shortcuts. I've not played with those, but that's pretty cool because I imagine you could uh, use those shortcuts to turn the overlay on and overlay off when you're in this mode if you were a solo uh, streaming plus production type, uh, present plus production type person. So yeah, that's all really kind of cool features uh, to be perfectly honest. And, um, and I think for me, the winners are probably production clocks having time remaining, the uh, triggers on playback time or time remaining, and then the flattened layers, I think, are the, the big features for the type of work that I do.